Hi, everybody. Welcome to Square Off. Uh, Liz, there's an election going on south of the border, and we will soon have one here in Ontario. What would you think if your employer told you how you should vote? You know, I don't think any employee, employer should try to coerce his employees into voting a certain way. Uh, but let's face it, you know, anyone is really allowed to try to convince anyone else to follow their political leanings. But when a boss tells you your job could be at stake if you vote for a certain candidate, that's simply not right. As long as there's no actual threat implied, Mark. I mean, your employer is perfectly within their rights to explain economic realities as they see them. And we're going to get into that a little bit more later on Square Off. Well, it seems no matter how hard the Prime Minister tries to distance himself and his government from the abortion debate, it keeps getting thrown in his face. Now, Justice Minister Rob Nicholson says the onus is on caucus colleague Maurice Vellicott to explain why he recommended a Diamond Jubilee medal for a jailed anti-abortion activist. Mary Wagner's aggressive actions counseling women in abortion clinics have repeatedly landed her behind bars. Vellicott used one of his 30 allotted Queen's honors to reward her. The conservative backbencher also handed out one of those medals to Linda Gibbons, another longtime pro-life advocate and frequent convict on mischief, char mischief charges. In defending his actions, Vellicott compared Wagner and Gibbons to Martin Luther King for using civil disobedience in a just cause. So should an MP be handing out an honor like the Diamond Jubilee Medal to people convicted of crimes? To discuss this, we're joined in Toronto by Alyssa Golub, Youth Coordinator for the Campaign Life Coalition. Next to her, Susan G. Cole, the senior editor with Now Magazine. Susan, the argument in this case is that Henry Morgenthaler was awarded an Order of Canada and spent time behind bars. So why is the Vellicott scenario any different? Because we had had a national debate on abortion, a movement to support women's right to choose, courts that were consistently unable to convict Henry Morgenthaler because the law did not work. And that went all the way to the Supreme Court where it was decided that in fact women had the right to choose because otherwise they didn't have security of person. And can I also say that that particular point of view reflects a Canadian consensus by which 76% of Canadians say that a women have the right to choose and that choice should be a matter between her and her doctor. So the truth of the matter is that, that it is a very different situation because Morgenthaler's Order of Canada reflected the national values of this country. Hmm. All right, Alyssa, what do you think? These women are convicted felons. What does it say if we're rewarding them for their behavior of breaking the law? Well, I would say that it's absolutely no different. And Morgan Teller was um, behind bars between 74 and 88, in and out. Um, it did not reflect national consensus at that time, nor does it even now, with a Ipsos Reid poll saying the majority of Canadians want some type of restriction on abortion. And I mean, it, it all, you have to also take a look at what they're doing. It's civil disobedience, but it's a 64-year-old grandmother who's standing outside praying, and it's a young woman who is handing out roses to girls inside the abortuary. It's not like they're, get, they're firebombing or doing anything that would be violent. It's nonviolent civil disobedience. We've recognized historic figures in the past for doing the same thing. So I see no difference with Mary or Linda. But well, the one fact, of the well, hang on a second, that Susan, hang on, hang on. But the fact, Alyssa, that it's against the law uh, and it doesn't necessarily, as you say, reflect the way many Canadians feel. And there's been a national debate about this. Should we allow everybody in any type of civil disobedience, no matter, I mean, handing out roses, you're right, but what's the next step after that? Maybe it's not firebombing, but maybe it's something a little more than that, which again is against the law and punishable by conviction. Well, I mean, absolutely, there has been no debate about it. In fact, when there actually wants to ha have a debate happen in Parliament, it's completely shut down. Like people who use the abortion rhetoric of a woman's right to choose, that's not even a complete sentence. A right to choose what? Drink and drive, what? It's a right to choose to have an abortionist kill an unborn baby. And a lot of Canadians are not comfortable with that, are not okay with that. We do want the debate. The abortion lobby keeps shutting it down. So. Therefore, Linda and Mary have to do what they do, break an unjust law in order to get their point across, in order to save people's but lives. But they're not just breaking an unjust law, so let's be clear about this. Uh, they are, first of all, breaking it consistently, showing contempt for the law, consistently fighting with police. And it's not like Martin Luther King, who went and stayed and did, and did uh, civil disobedience in order to have police officers, say, drag off protesters off the streets. These are women who are going in and harassing other women. And I think this is a very important point. They're not just staying out there on the street, seizing public space. They're going in to harass women 
who are in crisis themselves, often traumatized by the choice they're making, but feel the need to make that choice. And by the way, the choice is to have control over your own body. Except and that if is in the womb, right? And 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 it was precisely because of the harassment nature um, of, of the particular so-called protest that that was what was vexing the law Mary at that time. Actually, Mary or Linda have never been charged with harassment. It's either okay. um, public trespassing. I'm also going to say I have personally been with Mary on regular occasions when she does enter these clinics. I've been standing outside, and okay. a baby was actually saved okay, Alyssa, because a woman I, saw Alyssa, the violent nature of the police. Alyssa, to Mary. I don't think we want to argue about uh, the past so much as talking about what do we do going forward. Um, let's step back from the issue itself and talk about what the criteria is for getting one of these uh, Diamond Jubilee medals and its significant contribution to a particular uh, province or the country. Morgan Toller actually changed the laws. So he had a lasting uh, impact on what happened in Canada and that's probably why he was acknowledged. Well, how would you know that Mary so can I just ask you what you think the significant contribution, the lasting imp uh, impression uh, these women have left? Uh, what change have they actually uh, made to deserve the award? Well, I mean, obviously time will tell. And with regards to the injunction, Linda Gibbons prays outside of various clinics with a temporary injunction that was put on over 20 years ago. So that's a whole other issue with regards to... No, but I to want to know what's their, what tangible evidence is that they've made a change and a real contribution to the country. Um, I would say saving people's lives. Like I was saying Pat, in the past, Mary um, went into a clinic and because the police were so violent towards her that a woman actually was sickened by this hostility towards another woman and she left the clinic and she actually gave birth to her baby. And so she, Mary's but she didn't, but saved she, lives. Linda has saved her people's lives. No, it wasn't Mary's actions that saved the law. It wasn't Mary's actions that saved the law. It was the police actions. Right, no, it was the police actions that saved. And it wasn't even Mary's arguments about the nature, you know, the fetus and whether it was life or not that changed it or not. And I think the lasting impact on the country is a really important well, thing to mention. I've physically been there. Mary has roses and she hands out roses to the patient. But that wasn't and, what she was charged with at that and time. And when she does hand out roses, I've physically seen women leaving the clinic okay. with a rose saying they're not going to go through with their abortion because they All right, Mary. Alyssa, you said <clears throat> time will tell. When Liz asked you about, you know, why are these women getting these medals, you said time will tell. Why should we not wait? Let's wait. Okay? And then when time, and, and if time does tell that what these women are doing is of the same benefit as what Mr. Morgenthaler did in changing the law, maybe then we can award them the Diamond Jubilee Medal. But not well, now, because you, as you say, they're still in this process. They're, they're not yet at this greatness point that you believe that they will be at at some time. Why don't we just wait? Well, Why give them the awards now? Well, first of all, changing the law doesn't necessarily mean you haven't done anything. Like I said, they've saved people's lives. Secondly, it's up to Mr. Velikot who he wants to give the award to. There is no stipulations in the guidelines that they couldn't give them out to people who may have been convicted in the past. So he's not doing anything wrong or breaking any rules. So it's really up to him. And I do think that saving people's lives is a significant contribution to society. Well, my issue isn't that they haven't been convicted. Uh, is that they've been convicted. Yeah. I mean, I don't, uh, that, I, I don't care that they've been convicted. There may be some people who, you know, I mean, even Morgenthaler was convicted at some point. The question is, have, have they made uh, a lasting impact? And, and I want to talk, too, about, you know, when you're talking about that you've been there a couple of times where women have left the clinic, the truth of the matter is that the, the protests outside the clinics have been a, a, a traumatized, have had more traumatic effect often on the women who are seeking the medical attention to which they are legally... Uh, that you? I, we've, no, you, no, not well, me, having talked to women well, who I were have. furious who had, had, who had their lives disrupted while we're, they were getting the medical attention that they were legally um, able so to get. So praying is right. prohibiting them from getting medical okay. attention? Praying, I have no right, ladies, problem. I have no problem with people ladies. standing outside on the other side of the street and, and, and praying. Stay out of the clinics. Okay. Uh, all right. Susan G. Cole, Alyssa Golub, thank you for joining us. Thanks for a lively debate. And we hope we'll have you on again at some time very shortly. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. When we come back, a long-awaited report on the social assistance system in this province tells something we all thought anyway. It's not working. It's in dire need of an overhaul. So will Queen's Park actually do something to fix it? Oh, oh no, they can't. The legislature's prorogued, isn't it? Well, at least we're still working, and we're going to discuss that at length next on Square Up.